This is a sagittal section of the hoof capsule, cutting the front away from the back. Here in the middle here, what we can see is the pedal bone. So we're seeing that sort of solar arch of the pedal bone here. Uh, and as you can see, it comes up here. This is what we refer to as the sensitive and insensitive lamini. You can see how it forms these sort of leaf-like structures and it's actually very soft. You can see how it's, the nail here is just manipulating those leaves. Very sensitive. In cases of laminitis, this all becomes inflamed and it's the detachment from this hoof wall here away from the pedal bone that actually causes the pedal bone to move with inside the hoof capsule. If we come down to the bottom here, here we have the sole corium that produces the sole. So this is the horny sole here. We've got the live waxy sole that we want to keep. And here is the, is the flaky sole, um, this chalky flaky structure that often will um, exfoliate itself or when farriers come along will just ease out anything that's loose and wants to come away. But you want to remain or, or retain as much of this um, waxy sole as you possibly can. If we come around and see when we apply a shoe uh, and we're nailing the shoe in through the white line. So the white line is not actually white like this structure here. It's more of a yellow, yellow, um, yellow color. Um, and it, it's produced from this actual tip of this pedal bone just here. So right the way around the front and all the way around to the sides, the pedal bone will produce this um, white line zone. And it's a flexible junction between this sole here, the horny sole, and the horny wall. And what we're doing when we're shoeing, we're aiming for that white line. We go through the white line because we know it's away from the pedal bone, through the white line, up through the hoof wall, and out of the hoof wall. But you can see here we've got a cut, we've got a, a foot. It's got plenty of wall thickness, but you can see how close you actually become to these sensitive structures and how easy it is to actually catch them there. You can also see that um, driving nails into these structures and quite close to the sensitive parts, how you can get areas of trapped dirt in there and it's, it's the dirt that gets in or can track up an old nail hole that can get in here uh, and, and start to uh, produce an abscess. So a lot of the time you'll find abscesses um, in, in old nail holes or even current nail holes. Uh, as the hoof grows, the old nail holes will move away from the structures and you can see here an old nail hole that's as the foot grows, grows, or the hoof grows, um, this grows away. So yeah, you can see again here how close you are to those structures. Um, but I think it's a very good example uh, of what we're actually dealing with. It's brilliant to see the laminal leaves here all the way around, how sensitive they are, um, and how highly vascular this area is as well. You know, there'll be a lot of blood in here. There's blood in between all these lamini. So any sort of movement within the hoof capsule is part of the shock absorption mechanism. It's, it's that hydrostatic function of having blood in this here that's under pressure and then released as that foot's then unloaded. Um, but yes, there you have it.